Lucien Lessard. And I'm born in 1928. I started as an hour worker, first job. I was about 18, 19 years old in Montreal. Then in 1957, I came up here with BC. They decided to put me in charge of the erection on the second hour bridge. Bill uh, Wright, Lou Lassard, Norm Atkinson. My name is Norm Atkinson. For 50 years I was an iron worker and I thought this was the best bridge I've ever worked on. My name is Jim Pratt. I worked for Dominion Bridge Company for 25 years. My name is Gary Poirier. I was an iron worker for 33 years. It was a warm day and it was just another day. We were all the morning putting a great big piece of steel, 55 ton, so that was just like any other day, another piece of steel to do. When they brought this 50 ton out, it came out on the train, we are ready for it, and I was lining up the line when I gave the signal to lift it out. And when we start picking the load, the, the bridge came off from underneath our feet. Vans 4 and 5 of Vancouver's Second Narrows Bridge plunged into the waters of Burrard Inlet this afternoon with a tremendous hiss and a terrible loss of life. We could hear these loud sounds, bang, 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 so I somebody was shooting, and it was bolts coming out of the, the splices, breaking off in half. One jolt hesitated, and then she went all the way. And then the noise, it was so loud. Gone. At Lou Lessard, I talked to him. Gone. We were just like that. And, and the engineer across the way was giving us a shot through his television. He said, Where the hell is the bridge gone? I cut my belt loose from all my stuff, all but my buoyancy, and I started this dog paddle to get out. It was just bedlam, hollering, screaming people running. Sadly, there were bodies floating with the life jackets still on. It all just seemed so surreal. The tide was coming in. It carried me to the old Second Arrows Bridge. My life jacket was ripped off of me. I hung on to it. I grabbed the two by four. I couldn't see nobody else except myself. When I hit the water, I guess my life jacket just blew off my back and ends up on the bottom of the the ocean. And when I got on the bottom, I guess there was no air and the water was all dirty and I was out of breathe. And I didn't like the taste of the water because it went, when the bridge came down, I steered the mud on the bottom and I was all muddy. You couldn't see nothing for a while. Then after that, I can see the, the, the sunlight. So they put me in my back there and I stayed there for an hour. I had a broken leg and a broken arm and lots of bruise inside and everything. Then on the back of a pickup truck, they brought me to North Vancouver Hospital. And I spent three, four months there. At 3.40 p.m. on June 17, 1958, one of the new spans on the bridge gave way and plunged 175 feet into the Burrard Inland. 18 men died. Two days later, a diver, while looking for bodies, 
also passed. In all, 19 deaths related to the collapse. Four other ironworkers would lose their lives throughout the construction of the bridge, bringing the final total to 23 lives during the construction of this bridge. With the help of CBC radio announcer Rick Clough, local 97 officers, and Premier Mike Harcourt, the bridge was renamed the Ironworkers Memorial Second Narrows Crossing in 1994 to commemorate the workers who died. Other than the Ironworkers Union, the organizations most intimately involved after the collapse was the Workmen's Compensation Board as they adjudicated claims, completed their investigation, and participated in the Royal Commission. Today, we are honored to have the spouses and family members of those who lost their lives in the collapse, survivors, their families, and other guests are here. And uh, I want to assure you that the iron workers that passed away on this bridge were not risk takers. It wasn't anything to do with what the iron workers were doing on that bridge. It was an engineering default that put those people in harm's way and eventually led to their deaths on a collapse because it was insufficiently uh, built and designed. And it's also a time to recall and remember the events of that fateful day, the names of those who died on the job, the names and faces of the survivors and the workers who were impacted by the devastating events that occurred, and the chaos, the confusion, the fear, and the sense of real disbelief that something like this could actually happen in a moment and change lives forever. Al Bachel, Aaron Worker. Sydney Bellevue, iron worker. Walter Cocker, at iron worker. Joseph Cruz, iron worker. Kevin Duggan, iron worker. Stan Gartley, iron worker. Alex Hugo, iron worker. Frank Hinkleton, iron worker. Leo Joyal, iron worker. Alan McPherson, iron worker. Richard Mayo, iron worker. Percy Moffat, iron worker. Alex Robertson, iron worker. Rod Smith, iron worker foreman. Alan Stewart, iron worker. John Thompson, iron worker. Tom Warswick, iron worker. John Wright, iron worker. Gordon McLean, operating engineer. Rudy Holtz, painter. Murray McDonald, engineer. John McGibbon, Engineer, Lynn Mott, diver. I had a real good life. Raised six kids and helped my grandchildren and great-grandchildren and helped all, all my family too. They're all doing good. I'm very proud to say that I accomplished lots of things in British Columbia. I built lots of bridge, lots of school, lots of gym. Lots of chairlift, lots of white house. So I accomplish lots here. And I feel I give back what I got from. Make friends, be fair to everybody, and had the chance to be able to do everything I want. Everything I want. And I'm proud of that.